back to your B-52, you might Not as well go up to Dallas, I guess. <laughs> Halfway there. And, Not really. and we have a lot of people in the group, too, that aren't from Houston, you know, that are outside of it. And they, they saw someone that's doing some muling for, I think, other side or something like that. Or other half. Oh, He's yeah. muling for other half. Yeah, yeah so you get all kinds of people on the page. That people, just, from, uh, people from KC. So. I know there's some in there. A couple of people from Seattle. I mean, there's there's people from all over, so. Yeah, but it's a members next door. Like they, uh, he was actually one of the, the beer taster of the week this week, and one of the questions was, "How did you discover uh, beer tasting Houston?" And he put that he just literally into Facebook typed in beer Houston, and then like into the group search, and we popped up, and you know they it, they just came out one day to one of the bottle shares and. You know, they became good friends with us. With and now they're sharing the love with crap beer with everyone. Yeah, that's the that's yeah. the important thing. Awesome. So Man. it's been a pretty pretty big news day in, in beer. Have you guys heard? I don't know if you've heard this yet. Yeah, I heard it. <laughs> Boston Beer Company and Dogfish Head, uh, yeah. which you know, Boston Beer Company in Boston Same and Adams. Dogfish in yeah in Delaware, uh, agreed to merge in a three hundred million dollar deal. Wow. So we're talking about big, big beer manufacturers in the Northeast teaming up. Uh, really, two of the biggest names in the Northeast. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. $300 million is, is a pretty penny, too. So that's been all over, uh, I guess, some of the feeds and things yeah, like that. The, the, our, back P Ultra was a trendy thing yesterday. This is the new yeah. trendy yeah. thing. So it yeah. makes me think, too, is you know, you've, you've got my uh, the, the big breweries buying little ones but now you've got two of the big boys in craft merging together what you know what's on the table for them who you know who they're competing with but what's going to come out of this so i I don't know i'm i'm a little me is sad a little me is really excited to see what happens so what do you think joe joe's been drinking beer for a long time (laughs) (laughs) joe's one of my one of my really good friends that i can always count on getting a good review from like joe is this is this beer good and he's like, no, it's trash. Don't drink it. <laughs> no, no, normally he's like, no, this is a great beer. Uh, did you hear the news today? That's crazy. Yeah, I heard it. I like. I mean, I like the idea that uh, two big breweries can merge together and maybe do something interesting. A super brewery, yeah, or you, multiple. Yeah, and you could get some really good stuff. I said, Dogfish Head makes some great beers. Oh yeah. I said, you know, Boston makes some good ones. I can't say that I've ever had a great one from them, but Mm -hmm. I said, you know, sort of sort of utopias if you want to. Oh (laughs) yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I said the. I'm really curious to see what they come up with. So when I think of how this would work, I mean, I think of a Boston Beer Company kind of having the the production. I mean, because they have plants throughout the country. They're kind of I always compare them to like the way the USA Today used to be, where they have different presses in different parts of the country that print the USA Today, so it's available everywhere. Yeah. Where Boston Beer Company is available everywhere, and it's not because it all comes from that one brewery in Boston. I mean, literally, there's multiple breweries throughout the country. So I guess that's one advantage, you know. Maybe now, uh, you know, Dogfish Head will be available. You know, will be produced in multiple plants throughout the country. Which, you know, that's that's one quick angle I can think of that'll come into play. I think it's for me. It's you have these two relatively medium sized breweries coming in together as one, and I think that's a, a good thing to fight against big beer. Right? We brought Michelob, and we've been talking about big beer. I think it's better. For I, I don't know, I'm not a market specialist on any of this, but I think it's better that they're getting together to attack that, you know, instead of staying small and saying, you know, independent. Well, they're still going to be independent, but they're grouping together to fight something that they're right. really passionate Truth. about, you know. And both of those guys, so Jim and Sam, you know, are two relative. of the biggest na- individual names in the whole beer. I mean, you know, yeah. Sam's been kind of like the poster guy for craft beer. I mean, Jim really too. Sam, you know, I remember back when he had that TV show, and I mean, he he was the the, the I think he was the president of the Craft Brewers Guild for a while, or, right? You know, and, and Sam's going to get a seat on the board of directors for Boston Beer Company, so you know, right? I assume based because you know I think of Boston Beer. I mean, Boston Beer, well. I guess Euling and there's a couple other breweries that are technically now craft, but for years, Boston Beer Company was the largest craft beer company in America. You know, I think, you know, I think, uh, I think Sam's, I mean, I think Dogfish Head was probably in the top 15. I mean, Mm -hmm. but I think it's much smaller than Boston Beer Company. Mm -hmm. So I assume, you know, because I think, I think Boston Beer Company, like if it was to be sold outright, it would be more than $300 million. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, Ballast Point was over $100 million (laughs) when it sold to Constellation Brands. For for a billion dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Was it a billion? Was it a billion? Yes, it was a billion. 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 Yeah, that's crazy. So, I mean, 
truthfully, that's kind of my point. That number's kind of almost low for either one of those breweries independently. But I guess they're going to – whatever they do together, it's, it's going to be interesting to watch. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's really huge. Fun. I mean, I, and I'll admit, I came straight here to the studio from, from work, and I didn't even know that. I mean, you just blew my mind at, at the, during the commercial break. I hadn't even heard the news. I haven't been spending yeah. as much time on Facebook lately as I should have apparently. <laughs> but, uh, no, that's that's crazy. I mean, that's literally two of the, the biggest names in craft beer joining forces. Mm-hmm. So that's exciting. I'm excited. Uh, people were already making jokes about it, you know. Um, are we going to see like a – what did they say? Uh, like a 120-minute Sam Adams, you know. <laughs> no, no. 120-minute no. yeah. rebel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to start mashing beers together. <laughs> Speaking of mashing beers together, do anything fun for the weekend? Oh, this weekend? Are, are, are you uh, suggesting we do a weekend brew? I, I think so. I think <laughs> we should. I mean, you know, it's Thursday. It's Thursday. So close to Mother's Friday. Mother's Day. Are you yeah. celebrating Mother's Day? Of course. I'm a beer-fed mother. I'm going to make sure beer's in my agenda for sure. <laughs> Uh, but anything uh, cool going on this weekend? Man, I, you know, I, I like I said, I came straight from uh, from a job. I actually didn't even look up what I was going on this weekend. Although, uh, you know, if anybody wants to know what's going on, I mean, pick up the the current issue of the C Magazine out everywhere right now. Cmagazine dot com online. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So there's a really cool uh, surf and music festival. That's right, uh, going on oh, in yeah. Galveston. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jimmy's on the pier. Um, it is gonna be a you know a music festival. There's gonna be a ton of great breweries out there. Um, a lot of music, craft beer tasting, longboard surf contest, um, and you know it's a fundraiser benefiting the Fun Rider foundation galveston chapter so it's ten dollars uh to get in and i believe you get unlimited craft beer samples i know that you know some of my favorite local breweries are going to be out there so and the music lineup's pretty impressive yeah uh los cardinales free rads uh robert Kuhn, in disguise Mas Pulpo, which they do like a really cool um like polka i love that name. Up. yeah so cool <laughs> so nice um, so that's something fun if you're looking for something to do on the island this weekend. Uh, hopefully the rain doesn't. Uh, yeah, that's uh, a problem. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, last time I checked, it, for the last two days, it was 100% chance of rain on Saturday. Now it's down to 90%. So hopefully. Uh, but sometimes, you know, I've learned from experience. Sometimes you think the weekend's going to be bad, and then it pushes through before the weekend comes. And yeah. it's a beautiful weekend. So. Yeah. Another um, really cool event that I'm interested in for Mother's Day is that there's a Mother's Day brunch bash at the backyard. Oh yeah, oh, I was yeah. Gonna, I was gonna, <laughs> in Seabrook. I saw that. Yeah, yeah, uh, and and so there's gonna be Jared's got a little event set up mm-hmm. for that. There's gonna be a little event there to, uh, you know, take your mom out to have brunch and drink some beer. I and mean, I've, I've talked to Jared and Zach and Eric, the chef over there, um, about what their plans are for summer because yeah, it's, it's gonna be interesting for them because you know you got the 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 typical summer traffic coming into Kima. Um, and that's Old Town Seabrook right there that you're talking about. So mm-hmm. a lot of that traffic feeds through there in or through there out. Mm. Um, but then you've, you've got their nemesis right now, which is going to be that 146 construction. Yeah. So um, I think with this brunch, they had already talked about possibly doing brunches uh, on a consistent basis on the weekends as the traffic picks up. So I think this might give them a telltale sign of how it will turn out. Oh, okay. Um, whether mm. like how successful their weekend brunches will be. Because they've definitely picked up a lot of traction Thursday nights are the nights to go out and try the the one-off dishes, the special, um, the once and only craft uh, mac and cheese mm-hmm. dishes. Let's see what else they've got out there. Well, the beer selection is pretty awesome. I was there a Tuesday night catching the Rockets oh, game. Oh yeah, that's or was right. It Tuesday, I saw or maybe that. it was Monday. Yeah, I, I was, sure I was just was. there earlier that day. I mm-hmm. But they have the uh, they have the uh, something. Uh, they had a couple beers I've never tried. They had the Panther Island uh, IPFNA. Whoa. And they had the uh, Clown Shoes Don't Fear the Blender Fruit Smoothie IPA. Two thumbs up on both of those. Nice. Yeah. Okay. They also had the, they had a Southern Star IPA, a hazy IPA. Had, had those, that was Southern Star. So, uh, Subtomical. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's, that's, that's the that's juicy IPA. Mm-hmm. That's it. One of their recent releases. Yeah, yeah. Yep. That uh, Panther of, Island. I mean, I think it was like I think it was about ten percent. I mean, it was uh, yeah, it's, yeah. No, that he, was good. Zach over there does a good job at he picking does, out man. some good beers. Um, I've been, I got to get with him and catch him at the right time to get some of this back pew ultra in there and get this summer crowd on that. Right. <laughs> but uh, speaking of IPAs, I, I completely forgot that I brought uh, my homebrewed IPA. Oh, nice. fancy! So, uh, yeah, so this one's going to be a lot of fun for you. So if pass your cups this way. I'll get y'all hooked up. <laughs> While you're pouring that, there was one more event that I wanted to talk about. And I know Joe mentioned that he might be going to B52 this week, and I don't know if he's going out to this event, but um, 
Southern Star, which you've probably had, you know, Bombshell Blonde, did a collaboration with B-52, um, and they did a barrel fermented sour in wine and oak barrels that's conditioned with passion fruit and raspberry. Um, so if you're into fruit, you're into sours, this is definitely a release that you're probably going to want to get a hold of. I know that they had limited glassware, and um, they were going to release it this Sunday, so that's something super fun. Ooh, pass me one. Yeah. Let's see. Delicious. The, I'll take the yeast cup. I got all the floaties in this one. So like when did you brew this? This was brewed about a month and a half ago. Nice. So this is the name that I decided to give it because my buddy James Huerta from Grun- uh, Grumpy McGregor Brewery That's is right. the one that helped me build the recipe and loaned me some of his equipment for the day. Uh, we call it John and James's, oh shit, we had a blowout. <laughs> New England style IPA because uh, we had a blowout in the fermenter with it. Is it just yeah, me or does it smell like juicy fruit? It was it, so. It does. So the it what, does what, smell what, like the, what the, the, the technical name is a New England style IPA with mango and pineapple puree. And the way wow. we did this is we hopped it with El Dorado hops through the boil. And we dry hopped it with El Dorado and Vic Secret hops. And the fun part about it is that the yeast strain that we used was the ninth generation Houston Daisy Chain project. Oh, so this is part of the Daisy Chain. Yes, sir. Nice. So it's, yeah, so we're not all big and out there, and everyone's not coming to our beer or to my house to try the beer. But uh, it's a it's a fun way to to market it, and you know it's it's. As as, gr- as delicious as it is to me, I'm a little biased, but um, the sad thing is I'm not sure if I'll ever be able to brew the same exact beer because it was a daisy chain. Sure, sure. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, so that's that's what I got B- today. Bottle conditioned? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Old, uh, I'm, 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 this is only my second batch ever. This is old school. You know, I'm bottle conditioned, priming sugar, the whole the whole year one, nine yards That's type all thing. right. That's all right. It but tastes yeah, great. So no, and, this tastes great. Yeah, it's it's everyone like that I've had, um, I good. brought it to Backfish on Monday for the Backfish homebrew oh, bottle wow. share, and, mm-hmm. and it was well received from what I heard. Um, the nose on it, from what I'm told, is mm-hmm. super delicious. Mm-hmm. Smells, smells like juice. It smells like, it smells like juice. It, seriously, when it you does, open, when like you open like a piece of juicy fruit gum, it's yeah. yeah. exactly what it smells like. Juicy fruit gum. Now, How nostalgic. Now, Joe just passed me a, 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 a can. What, 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 what am I half. drinking now, Joe? This is uh, other half, Citroen Strata. Nice. Pretty good. How'd you come across this? Uh, from a, a mule I've got on the East Coast. Nice! <laughs> a beer mule. A beer mule. It doesn't mean a literal mule. It means yeah. Smokey uh, and the Bandit. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Awesome. He gets he gets some good stuff. The stuff from Burley Oak, stuff from uh, other half uh, Dewey Beer, Dewey Brewing Company. Fantastic. fantastic yes. Wow. Very. Yeah. Awesome. Well, hey, I just we had a uh, lot of beer today to drink. We, yeah, we did. <laughs> I see a candle behind the the. Uh, the is clock, that, the clock's at, the clock's at uh, quadruple zero. That means we're out of time. Oh, man, that was that quick. That means Case Files with Captain Ashley is coming up next. So uh, the beer drinking will continue, although uh, we're going to have to evacuate the studio. Hey, hey, fellas, thanks so much for coming. Yeah, no problem. Thank yeah, you for having me. This is fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, actually touched on a lot more things. I know last time I was on the show, the, my girlfriend Madison was sitting in here, and she's like, why didn't you talk that much? I was like, well, I didn't realize I was going to be that nervous, but now I guess... Well, I'm we had Money Mike. We had Money Mike here, too. Oh, so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this seems more like a little hangout. Yeah, that's yeah. what Mike, it is. Mike's all tall and scary. <laughs> thanks for coming, guys. Yeah, it was a lot of fun, man. I yeah, appreciate it. It was us. a lot of fun. Thank you. And, and the bottle share continues next door, right? Yep. Yes. Awesome. Already will continue. All right. Space travel. Beer. Does this look infected? Beer. Boating. Did we mention there's beer? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening. We'll be back next week, we think. Thursday nights, 7 p.m. Galactic Coast Power Hour. Final Draft Radio. I gotta pee. <laughs>